What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the add-on RAN tools and the way that you can use it to quickly add materials in your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that RAN tools is pretty much an all-in-one add-on for working in Blender. So it's got, um, I, I did an overview video on it before, but it's got like a ridiculous number of tools contained inside of it. Everything from hard surface modeling to rendering tools. It's got tools for setting up HDRI backgrounds and um, cloth simulation, cable simulation, so a number of different cutter tools, just a ton of different stuff contained inside of this add-on for working in Blender. And so I think I'm gonna make a few videos talking about some of the specifics in here, but for right now, in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the material tools that's contained inside of this. So this gives you direct access to the materials that are contained from ambientcg.com, and you can add them specifically in your viewport. You can also adjust materials, um, kind of combine materials together, do a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and let's jump in. So first thing we wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have RAN tools enabled, but then you can do an Alt M in order to add materials. And notice how you can search in here for different material types. And that's going to search Ambient CG, and that's going to um, let you find different kinds of materials, right? So this is if I searched wood, you can click on this, and you can see all the different options that are in here. Notice how this is one page. If you wanna to go to the next page, you can click the right arrow button right here, and then it'll scroll to the next page. So a bunch of different options in here. Let's say I was to select one of these wood floor materials like this one. Notice what that's going to do is that's going to give us the ability to download the materials and set them up. One cool thing about this is if you do hold the control key and click on this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna download this and it's also going to mark it as an asset when it downloads it. And you can see the status of the download in the upper right hand corner of the screen right here. But basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna set up your material completely. So if we jump into our shader editor, Notice how this didn't just bring in the base color map, it also sets up the roughness map, the normal map, and the displacement in here as well. So notice how this sets up the roughness map as well as the normal map in order to make a more realistic material. So this basically comes in render ready and ready to go. And so you can download however many materials that you want to. So for example, let's say I wanted to look for a stone. I could just do an Alt M and we could just type in stone right here. That's going to go search ambient CG for stone and that's going to give us a bunch of different options and obviously these are all a little bit different but let's say for example that we wanted to bring in let's go with the gravel material right here. We can just pick this, pick one of the sizes and bring it in just like this. And notice how it's applied that material in here for us. All right so another cool thing about this tool is you can also hold shift and tap the F key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to do a quick material adjustment in here. So let's say for example, that we were to jump over into rendered mode and notice how it gives me the option for rendered EV or rendered. Um, if I was to go to rendered EV, Notice how this would also give me the ability to go to rendered cycles. So it's just a additional tool that this gives us, but this is gonna give us the ability if we do a shift F and like click and drag our bump strength, for example, that's gonna allow us to quick adjust our bump strength inside of our actual window without having to jump to the shader editor. There's other things in here too, like being able to make this metallic, which we're not gonna worry too much about right now because obviously our wood floor won't be metallic, but you can do a quick material adjust in here in order to adjust well, the materials. So another cool function that's in here is if you do a shift W, it's gonna pop up a window like this. There's a material transfer function in here where you can select a material, so like this wood material right here, and then you can click on an object and it's going to place that material based on the object that you select, select it. So if I do a shift W, do a material transfer, material transfer, that's going to swap out materials really quickly inside your window. So alternatively, you can select an object and do a shift J inside your viewport, and that's going to allow you to select a different material for an object. So if you wanna swap between materials really quickly, you can swap between any materials in your model without having to go outside of your viewport. So it's also got a number of different functions that you can use in order to combine or mask materials. So for example, let's say that we have a grass material applied right here. I can select this principal shader in the shader editor and do a shift M. Notice how that's gonna give me the node mix menu. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to allow us to either add different no noise textures or masks to this, or you can also select things like your other materials right here. So for example, if I was to select my gravel material and then 
select a kind of mix. So in this case, maybe like a Musgrave texture like this. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna automatically add the nodes in here to mix those together. So um, notice what it does is it adds a Musgrave texture in here and then it adds the node setup in order to combine these together. Well now, what I can do is first off, if you look at this, you can see how my gravel now has grass on it, but I can adjust things like the vector on here using these sliders really quickly. You can adjust the other things on here as well, but you can use this in order to quickly combine different textures together um, without having to do a whole bunch of node work in the background. And so you can also use this to apply surface imperfection maps. And so what you're gonna have to do though is you're gonna have to download a library of imperfection maps and then within the settings, right, in your materials, you can link this to the folder for imperfection maps. So the one that's recommended by the developer is from ArtStation. It's this free surfaced imperfections pack. It's got a number of things from scratches to smudges. You can just download that and then link to it in that folder. But then what you can do is you can select something like your roughness, for example, and you can do an Alt-M in here. And notice how once you have that folder linked up, you can come in here and you can add your imperfection maps. So for example, say we wanted to add like a water stain in here. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add those water stains into or onto your material right here. And you can come in here and you can actually adjust that if you decide that you wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these kind of out of the way a little bit. But this is going to allow us to basically adjust things like the brightness and the contrast of that map. And so notice how you can use this in order to generate more contrast for those stains right here, but you can apply that to your roughness. You could also come down to like your normal, for example. So if we select our normal right here and do an all M and we add maybe some scratches, those scratches are going to show up on our surface as well. So you can use this to really quickly add those surface imperfections to make things look more realistic in your scenes. So I'll link to the materials section of his documentation so you can kind of see what the different things are that you can do with the materials. There's just a ton of different tools in this tool for doing different things with your materials. So I will link to this add-on in the notes down below. Um, I'm thinking about doing a few different videos talking about some of the functions in here because there's just so many. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think about that, about the add-on. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.